I was watching the Notorious B.I.G. documentary, and he talked about how he was like, people told me that like certain lyrics were either too intense or whatever on this album, but I'm just writing my truth. And I was like, oh, is it that simple? Like, he's just writing his truth. He had a song called Ready to Die, which was about feeling suicidal. And I was like, okay, well, my truth right now is that I'm a big guy with a puppy. <laughs> A few weeks ago, our client Douglas Wydick got in touch with me to ask if I could help him cast a video he was doing, a music video to go with a song he had just written. The song he told me was called Big Man, Tiny Dog. And I heard the song, I thought it was hilarious, just so witty and well written. And I said, of course, we'd be happy to help you. The music video and the song just dropped this week. You can find it on our Instagram at School for the Dogs. I'll also link to it in the show notes. The video features his dog, Skye, who has come to our puppy playtimes, as well as our Great Dane student, Bandit who came to us when he was just a tiny Great Dane pup, (laughs) if there is such a thing, and Ripley, who is a Cairn Terrier puppy. Her owners actually started coming to us with their late dog, Maggie, also a Scotty, back when we were on our East 2nd Street studio. After chatting a little bit with Doug, I was really curious to learn more about him so i asked him if he would come on the podcast for the best pet ever series he agreed and you're about to hear our conversation and he also composed a jingle for this series so much thanks to his sweet tea studio in brooklyn for what you are about to hear Can you hear her chewing in the background? <laughs> what is she chewing? Uh, it's a pork knuckle. It's a big oh. bone. Should I, should I move her upstairs? No, no, no. It sounds fine. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Douglas Wydick, so glad to have you here. Um, yeah, as a dog owner, as a client, as an artist, as a comedian, uh, as someone who I am curious to learn more about. Um, Douglas, why don't, why don't you introduce uh, yourself and then maybe you can tell us a few words about Sky, your pup. Yeah, surely. So hi, I'm Doug. Uh, I go by Douglas Wydick professionally. And uh, yeah, I'm a musical comedian based in Brooklyn, New York. I also produce music and mix music on the side um, and produce a show called North Coast that I also perform in. I'm a co-founding member of North Coast. We've been around in the city for almost 13 years and we do hip hop improv comedy, but I also release musical sketch comedy all the time. And I've been doing that for like, I don't know, 10 years. And I was a performer at Upright Citizens Brigade before it closed and I was a performer at the pit before their 24th street location closed. And now North coast performs at the asylum once a month, super fun stuff. So yeah, that's like my, that's my main stuff is I do musical comedy, hip hop improv. And uh, I also, wow. I do a show with one of the real housewives called Sonia in your city. I I feel like I would like us to be friends. <laughs> we should be friends, especially after how silly your and jaunty your little walk was on that re- Instagram reel. <laughs> I was LOLing for the rest of the day. It's funny because it like it made me like it made me laugh too because it was like <laughs> me at my like goofiest. Yeah, for those listening, he's work. he's referring to a little reel I did where I'm wearing my. Where I'm wearing this big black poofy jacket and I'm walking my dog and I have a bright yellow leash tied around my waist. And, uh, <laughs> and I just 
I was just walking very seriously in, in, with funny music telling people. It cracked me get. up and I started tying her leash to the fanny pack, which totally opened me up for better, you know, training while we walk. And, you know, I have more control now. So it's isn't it such a game changer? Game it's changer. Such a, I forget sometimes to to hook my dog around my leash. I mean, hook the leash around my waist. And then mm-hmm. suddenly I remember and it feels like it feels like I just I mean, you, you do get another hand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, love I love that you're a musical me- comedian. Is that something when you were growing up? Where, I mean, I, I love it because as regular listeners to this podcast might know, I love movie musicals in particular. Oh, OK. And I I, I also love like silly songs. I was a, yeah. I was really into Tom Lehrer when I was a kid. Tom Lair. I feel like I I heard some Tom Lair. Is it? Oh. Was he doing like stand up mixed with uh with music? I mean, he's like from the I gosh I don't know fifties maybe. I actually sang in a recital once one of his tunes. I'm going to sing it for you right now. A little bit of it. All, right, here we go. All the world seems in tune on a spring afternoon. When we're poisoning pigeons in the park, <laughs> every Sunday you'll see my sweetheart and me. As we poison the pigeons in the park. When they see us coming, the birdies all try and hide. But they still go for peanuts when coated with cyanide. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He did, he did the, the element song. You okay. Heard that one? Well, I've definitely heard poisoning pigeons in the park. That's fantastic. With, with like Weird Al, someone you were into? Like, I don't know. How do you, how do you decide that's what you want to do when you grow up? Right. Yeah. Well, it it was a very natural process. I was obsessed with musical comedy growing up, but I didn't fully make the decision until later. So I studied guitar very diligently from the ages of like seven till 17. Then I, at the same time, was obsessed with Tenacious D. I loved Weird Al, um, Adam Sandler's comedy albums. Pretty much any time someone would mix music and comedy, I would go, oh, that, that, I like that. You know, when Jimmy Fallon got on SNL, I, my mind was blown. Lonely Island was an obsession. And so I always wanted to mix the two. And um, when, I, when I started studying sketch comedy at UCB, I was like, oh, maybe this will be something that can help me carve out a niche for myself. Instead of just being like another white dude doing comedy, maybe I can be musical and that'll help me be different and also original in certain ways. And I I think I have something to contribute musically as well. So um, I got really into freestyling and North Coast got founded when I was very young, my hip hop improv group. Yeah, I I guess the decision really did happen more as I got obsessed with UCB when I was younger. And you have you ever been to UCB, Annie? Yeah, yeah. We actually used to be located on East 2nd and Avenue A, uh, so right around the corner. Okay, yeah, so you were right by the Beast. That's what they called that one. Oh, okay. Uh, The UCB East, the Beast. And so um, I think that the thing that fully hammered it was I was a member of a sketch group with – a bunch of folks that are actually crushing it in entertainment now, Bowen Yang, Matt Rogers, Sudi Green, uh, Tessa Scara, and we were called Pop Roulette, and we did musical sketch comedy. And that's when I was like, oh, okay, I think this is like what I do is musical comedy. That's when it like fully hammered home when I was like 22 or 23. That's so cool. All right. Now, how does dogs factor into any of this? (laughs) All right. It's a dog's podcast. So I, um, (laughs) so I had my first Scotty when I was four years old and her name was Kelly and I fell madly in love with Scottish Terriers. And I don't know what it is, but once people find their breed, um, or their type or, um, well, your, your parents must've picked out Kelly. Yeah. They picked out Kelly. Um, my aunt had had a litter of Scotties and we just fell in love with her. She was the runt of the litter and we knew nothing. I mean, we knew nothing. She tore up our house as she was teething. We didn't, we didn't know crate training. We did, we were just learning as we went along and 
Kelly, for that reason, was a saint because as she got older, she chilled out. But when she was a puppy, she must have been extremely confused uh, about us and how we were raising her. You know, she was probably like, I don't know where my home is in the home uh, because we just let her sleep wherever because we didn't know. And then as we got smarter and more savvy and learned more um, after Kelly passed, we got more Scotties and we were madly in love with that crew that group that was the maggie cody and brooklyn that were their names and um maggie was just all sweetness cody was like extremely regal he kind of looked like teddy roosevelt and brooklyn was another like slightly runtish little cutie oh and and, and um, you had yeah. so you had three at the same time at one point we actually had four terriers in the house we had wow a at one and point. you yeah. said your family's in florida Mm -hmm, South Florida. So we had a nice big lawn for them all to run around on and play. So a three dog household for a New Yorker sounds like a lot. It would be, I think having one dog in New York has tested me to my very core. And so (laughs) I think that having a bunch of dogs here, if I didn't, since I'm a solo dog parent, I would need like even more help if I had more dogs here. I do have a backyard though, which is a game changer and I'm getting some AstroTurf like pet run put mm-hmm. in next week. So that's going to be a game changer too cuz she's always chewing on the mulch and it scares the crap out of me. Oh yeah. Living that's that's you're living the dream and that's actually very smart to uh to get the fake stuff. <laughs> yeah, it'll be it'll be good for my mental health. <laughs> Uh, well, because sometimes, yeah, some dogs eat, eating the stuff in, that blows into the yards, especially in New York City, can make them sick. Yeah, there's um, random junk all the time. I pretty mm-hmm. much have to watch her like a hawk back there. She also um, digs holes and my roommate gardens. So there's some issues with that. He'll be like, um, so, you know, I have these plants that are actually seasonal and your dog just dug a big hole and ruined one of them. And I was like... Oh, I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, this is what she was meant to do in the world, actually. But um, yeah, he's looking for. Have you tried? Me. Have you tried the eye dig? Oh, right. There's the there's like scratch stuff, right? Or mm-hmm. I haven't seen eye dig. Eye dig is a cool product. Um, it is basically like a pit that they can dig stuff out of. Ooh, um, I'm looking at it now. Yeah. Okay. But you could also try, well, I, I, what else could you try? I mean, you could like put stuff in a box and just like with the towels, like layers of towels and stuff, treats and towels and streets and just let her get like old towels. I mean, not like good towels, yeah. um, rags. Um, but yeah, terriers love to, to pull stuff apart. Um, so any, we, we call it a destructive ball when you, uh, you can like wrap treats around, um, wrap rags around treats and then stuff the little wrapped treats into like a one of those open balls a holy roller they're called anyway i'm just giving you ideas okay. that make her dig a little bit less but i love um, that thank you so much but yeah much. it's a lot um it's it's uh three dogs in new york city is different than three dogs in florida with a yard um totally yeah yeah, I would have to have daily, you know, because I have caretakers come in twice a week right now on a recurring schedule uh, when I'm like out and about, like I when I'm like either at the gym or stuff, like I don't want her home for too long without being let out. And so I, I would have to have even more kind of recurring help. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, how did uh, your current cutie Sky come into your life? So Sky is super dreamy. Um, I we it had been two years since we lost our final Scotty Maggie. She lived to fourteen, I think actually third, like deep into thirteen. But uh, but we kept seeing Scottish Terriers in the clouds after we lost Maggie, and it was just so hard because yes, there's this newfound flexibility where you can travel without worrying about your dog or. Uh, there's, you know, you can just leave the house and not be thinking, but we missed our, we missed our Scotties so much. We're just a Scotty family. So it had been a little too long. We were starting to get that itch. And I was even emailing some of the rescue centers in New York, like, can I, can I come walk some dogs, please? Like, I just wanted to be around them. And, um, 
it it was also coinciding with like a kind of challenging personal time for me. And so my mom did a little research and found a litter of terrier uh, Scotty's near my uncle in Plano. And I was like, well, that's a great excuse to visit my uncle. And so I went and picked her up in Dallas and, um, it was the head of the Scottish Terrier Association in Dallas, and she was a wonderful, wonderful woman. And, um, you know, she gave me all sorts of advice and stuff about the breed and just super, super conscientious, wonderful person. And I flew her back to Brooklyn a day later, <laughs> and uh, she ran directly towards me out of the whole litter. She was the first one that ran towards me. And um, I've learned so much more raising her solo than it than when I was in high school and college with the Scotties because there's no safety net. It's me. I'm I'm the person training Sky. I'm the person raising Sky. It's not like I can ever be like, ah, I'm doing homework. Here you go, mom. Here's the dog. And so this process has taught me so much about animals and so much about um, pet parenting that I'm I'm very grateful for. So it's definitely been a journey with little Miss Sky. She's been on five flights and she's not even one years old yet. You've been to puppy playtimes at school for the dogs. Is that right? Yes. Oh my gosh. So fantastic. So I was keenly aware that she needed to start getting socialized, especially during the critical window. And, um, she was super feisty. She was chewing on my shoes and ankles and stuff in the mornings. And I was like, okay, we need some bite inhibition here ASAP. <laughs> um, and so she played with a bunch of dogs at school for the dogs. And Adam was just phenomenal. Shout outs to Adam Davis. Um, how did, how did you remind me how you found us again? Oh, I found you through my vet. Were you um, asking your vet specifically for her playtime recommendations or? I was looking for playtime. I was looking for training and um, the first business card. There was a couple that she handed me, but the first business card and highest recommended was y'all. What would you describe the puppy playtimes you came to? How would you describe it to someone who has no idea what a school of the dogs yeah. puppy playtime looks like? Well, it's um, a beautifully controlled atmosphere uh, with an extremely highly knowledgeable person running it and that person's not only managing the dogs but they're managing the owners and educating the owners all at the same time so I learned about meta signals displacement signals uh I just I keenly watch my dog's behavior when she's interacting with other dogs so much differently now Mm -hmm. after those sessions and so when I do puppy play dates in my neighborhood now um which I'm very lucky to be able to hold in my backyard Mm -hmm. uh, there's a there's a Pomeranian that, and there's a Golden that Sky plays with a lot. I'm very, very, very aware of when things are going well. And then I'm very aware if things are about to go south or if they need a break or mm-hmm. anything like that. So um, School for the Dogs was able to educate while also helping Sky get that valuable socialization. Yeah, I, I think that really is such, what's so special about our puppy playtimes is that they're really classes. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. not just um, dump your dogs here, everybody sit on the perimeter and watch what happens. There's actually like a professional trainer there who is helping you figure out what is and isn't okay, what to be looking for. And so even if like exactly like you said, like even if someone, because some people balk at the price, it's Mm -hmm. $40 for a half hour, which um, I mean, in New York City, it feels like everything's becoming so expensive. That it yeah, <laughs> that's you and a friend for cocktails. Right. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's sad, but true. It's madness. The um, is madness. But what you're getting is really, um, you know, uh, half an hour of time with a trainer who uh, is going to make you a better informed referee. Uh, when you go into situations with your dog after this and you will learn, you will learn things that you will now go and meet people who've had dogs and have no clue about. You're going to now see things happening in play from having attended these 
these sessions where you're going to be mm-hmm. like, oh, gosh, like, do I tell them that maybe their dog is feeling uncomfortable? Or... <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I actually like it... have to manage that because, you know, you never want to be seen as helicoptering or policing other people's dogs. But mm-hmm. if it if it affects my dog, then I'm going to. I right. Don't care. <laughs> right. Which is why I think it's, you know it's the another benefit of having uh having someone in charge in our case a trainer um at these at these sessions it's because at the dog park no one no one is allowed to pipe up and say i know what's what um, right but it even sounds like you know you said you're run, you're you know quote unquote running puppy playtimes in your yard maybe it's just your friends but still it sounds like you're the sounds like you're the one who is having people over and kind of mediating it and that's really smart if you're with people who are willing to to listen to you know you and and follow kind of your lead and not interject with possibly misguided information about you know how they're going to work it out on their own um yeah did he did uh did she meet some good friends is she at at puppy playtime yeah she met so the the most successful interaction was with a german shepherd that because sky super feisty scotties are just they and basically insatiable like the 30 minutes was far, far too short for Sky in terms of her, like, I mean, who knows if the play would have devolved after that or whatever, but she was like, wait, it's over every single time. Aww, um, yeah. Uh, and, but she found a German shepherd that they played so well together. And there was lots of short pins, lots of, um, you know, quick bites that were just like a test. And, um, and that I have footage from that, that I have still watched to this day. Cause she, she's about half the size is, um yeah uh, well yeah 30 minutes you know it's it's the ideal time for what we do but i think that um like i know my dog uh poppy she really needs like an hour with the dog for for a a good play time because at least Mm -hmm. because like i feel like it takes her it could take her 45 minutes to start feeling comfortable around that other dog and sort of relax into it so does um, Poppy need to be eased in to the play? She needs to be in, eased into most things, and then she's really into it. Um, nice. That's that's how I I would put it. But yeah, yeah, she she yeah. plays really nicely when she does. Maybe maybe Sky can have a play date. Are you in Brooklyn? How old is she now? Six months. Aw. Yeah. So part of the reason I wanted to have you on was to talk about uh, your hilarious new song, um, <laughs> which. Uh, I I was laughing out loud when I heard it. Um, it is called Big Man, Tiny Dog. I see a lot of men in Brooklyn with their big ass pooches. You think your dog's an SUV? Bro, you just look stupid. You ain't looking so tough, Chad. Quit your weak ass whining. It's time to be a real man and get a dog that is tiny. Big man, tiny dog. That's the way to look tough. I'd rather yip, yip, yip. Then a rough, rough, rough. You show your dog off like a truck. That's enough. Capiche? I prefer a snug VW bug on a three foot leash. Big man, tiny dog. Big man, tiny dog. Don't need a man sized dog. I got a little Lincoln log. Got my posse of potatoes straight up barking at a leaf. You can keep your St. Bernard with my Scotty. I will be. I don't need a Rottweiler or a Great Dane. Give me a Yorkie Poo with a tiny frame. No Pyrenees with a fluffy coat. Give me a Bichon Freeze that looks like a toad. Yo, lady, your Bernie's Mountain Dog looks like a Muppet got lost in the rain. I prefer Toto. Bopping like Frodo with Dorothy. That doggy, he's off of the chain. For your Bordeaux, you need a lead leash. I use a shoelace from a Maltese. When your dog barks, it's scary as hell. My dog can't bark and it wears a tiny bell. Jason Momoa with a Chihuahua. The Rock with a Terra, you're saying Ohana. Your dog's scaring children, it's looking so mean. I'm out in the park and I'm benching 15. Woof. Woof. I can carry my dog in my arms. You got a puppy the size of a barn. You're fitting one dog in your bed. I'm fitting ten dogs in my bed. Big man, tiny dog. Big man, tiny dog. Don't have a baby, so I got a dog the size of a hog. Don't need a giant ass pooch to make me feel like a man. So I got a tiny little floofer the size of a soda can. Big man, tiny dog. Big man, tiny dog. She's allowed to fly with me in the fuselage. Your dog's so big you have to pay to check it with the luggage i lose my dog regularly in foliage and roughing i'm just fucking around i love all dogs even big ones just not as much all right get your pet spayed my favorite line is you can put one dog in your bed i can put 10 dogs in my bed (laughs) 
<laughs> oh my gosh. That's based in truth. We used to have the Scotties sleep in our bed back in the day. We had like three or four dogs in the bed one time. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's a really funny song. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now you're shooting a video to go with this hilarious song and uh-huh. and you're having some of the breeds and some of those breeds I, I think are people you met through the school for the dogs. Did some people mm-hmm. contact you through our newsletter or was it from me saying, hey, contact this guy? Yeah, we got like four emails from your newsletter. Oh, wow. Great. Yeah. So that was fantastic. And uh, we've been emailing with some of those folks. And um, there was also like a, a Brussels Griffin Facebook group that got wind of the video. And we ended up getting like four Brussels Griffins at once one day. Oh, is that part in the song? I don't remember. No, but they're a small dog. And so it actually will help us heighten uh, because if it's like we're hitting jokes and aren't in the lyrics during the chorus when I'm just repeating big man, tiny dog, we can um, heighten by adding. Oh, right yeah. Um, yeah. Playing against the lyric a little bit, which could be satisfying only if it's later and you're like craving something fresh. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so we're going to do like a mix of some of the uh, fish Island stuff that they used to do in early two thousands hip hop videos. So like, if you think about Buster Rhymes, give me some more. There's going to be a lot of that. Uh, with an exterior shots at Sternberg Park where I'm getting up in the camera and it's like it's that's going to be more during the part where I'm aggressive to the the guy Chad with his big dog um, <laughs> so it'll be like I see a lot of men in Brooklyn like really close up and then later there's going to be a lot of portraits with big man big men and tiny dogs so it'll be like big man pan down tiny dog and it'll just be like contrast 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 like just hitting that contrast over and over again and hopefully (laughs) that'll be comedic fodder (laughs) yeah i I see a big man tiny dog calendar could be a thing Ooh, i like that idea see you're an entrepreneur annie and i (laughs) love that you're you're two steps ahead of me so i need to do that i mean how do you judge big i guess it's i guess i guess it depends on how small the dog is yeah, I think that, you know, we're we're shooting for dogs that are like 20 pounds and under. Mm-hmm. Um, and the men, you know, either tall or just, you know, larger men. Uh, but like any guy who's like 5'8 and under probably wouldn't work for this. Uh, and so we're I'm casting a, like a very guy, like a very kind of like cool bro looking dude for the Chad role. Mm-hmm. Um, because like I do it's like even when I was on vacation recently like I meet people who like almost use their dog as like an extent it's like a it's like a pair of sneakers to them it's like yo look at my dog look how cool I am and it's like no the the dog's not an accessory like it's an animal like I don't know and it just cracks me up that they use it as like a pair of adidas it's like look at my giant mean looking dog it's like first off it doesn't need to like have that crazy leash you have on it second off like don't what do you, like, what do you mean crazy leash oh like the metal ones that you see you know the oh, ones okay. that choke and stuff okay um and and so you know you see people who are sort of like walking with it like hey don't get near me look how tough i am with my dog and it's just like it doesn't i don't think it has to be that way i think it can be more of a companion thing it's so interesting because on the one hand your song seems kind of like it's you know having a tiny dog, tiny dogs are often thought of as accessories, uh, mm-hmm. pocketbook dogs, the, mm-hmm. um, teacups, the you know, <laughs> dogs that don't, that, that people think don't need training because they're just meant to sit on your lap. Um, but actually you're saying this dog is, is kind of against, uh, an approach to pet ownership that is not about, your pet's best interest necessarily, but more about using your pet to accentuate certain features of yourself. Yeah. I think I couldn't have put it better myself. And I, yeah, I just, I sort of like when I was on a vacation, like one of the tour guides had like a bunch of the same breed that he was like, they were like, getting in fights and he like showed me photos. And I was just like, this isn't cool. Like that you're telling me this. Um, and I don't want to know that your dog's gotten a big crazy fight and that you're like, I don't know. I, I think that you could be right that 
I'm playing the same card they're playing, but with the tiny dog. Uh, but my card is more ridiculous. And so I'm going to self-own my ridiculous card of me being a big man with a little yip-yip dog. Well, um, I, I I would say that you could have a big dog or a small dog and approach being uh, the owner, parent, guardian, whatever word you want to use yeah. to that dog uh, in a certain way that is really about um, enjoying giving that uh, animal a good life within mm-hmm. the environment that you live, let's say. Um, and yeah. if you're truly doing that, it doesn't the weight of your dog, the size of the dog, even the breed of your dog doesn't matter that much. But what you're saying is, is you're mocking. I, I think you're, if, if I had to <laughs> deconstruct it, you're mocking <laughs> the, you're mocking the other extreme of uh, pet ownership by specifically pointing out like, the big dudes who have their like dog version of, of their midlife crisis car. Yep. And, yeah. uh, and what that means. Sometimes it's not even that big of dudes. Sometimes it's like dudes who are like, don't look at me. Cause I'm, you know, maybe there's like a Napoleonic thing or whatever. Mm, uh-huh. And it's like, look at this giant dog instead of me or whatever. Yeah. It's funny because I feel like I live in an area where I almost only see just like doodles. I'm looking out the I'm looking out the window now. I can see like four different doodle type dogs. Um so the 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 amount of golden doodles on the street is absolutely fascinating to me. I see mini Aussies all the time. Yeah, there are, we have a lot of mini Aussies, but probably doodle bait. I've I've haven't done I haven't looked at the stats, but I would say the majority of our clients are probably some kind of poodle mix. And wow. Then we also have a lot of Frenchies, uh, and then and then of course we have a lot of uh, Heinz fifty seven type uh, rescue dogs like my dog. Um, okay. But um, and I, I love the Toto reference also in the song. Um, Thank you. We're going to use that Karen you recommended for it. For oh, show. excellent, Ripley, who yeah. who uh, his people had uh, actually it's a girl. Ripley's owners had. Um, they used to have Maggie May, who was a Scotty. Oh my goodness! I think yes. you know what? I think they just they mentioned that in the email, and I forgot. Yeah, I I have recently rewatched The Wizard of Oz seven times um, because I have a three year old. But every time I see it, I'm reminded that it's it's really a story of a family in need of a dog trainer because it starts <laughs> out with uh, Toto going after. Uh, the mean Miss Gulch, right. and uh, and then Miss Gulch says she's going to take Toto, and then she takes Toto away in the basket, and and uh, Dorothy gets all upset, and then Toto right. runs back, and then um, so the whole story, and then and then that plot line kind of gets lost from there, but then right. it all goes, they needed to do was cue it down. Yeah, the whole, <laughs> the whole thing would have happened. All they needed was to put up an X pen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um. There's no song about that yet. Um, but yeah, so, um, and my dad always used to call my my little Yorkie Poo, Amos, who was the love of my life. Um, oh. usually, my dad used to always say, how is Toto? Um, oh, so that's made, funny. Made me think of that too. I um, found that most people don't know Toto was a Cairn Terrier. Most people think Toto was either a Scotty or some other, um, I think a, York, a Yorkshire Terrier. Oh, huh. Cairn? Yeah, Cairns, Cairns are not that well- are not that well known. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm trying to think of the other lyrics that really, <laughs> that my dog wears a bell. <laughs> yeah, she does. Sky does wear a bell. <laughs> really? Yeah. She has a little plaid uh, collar and it has a tiny bell on it. That's where I got the lyric from. <laughs> so she kind of jingles into the room, but don't worry. I use a harness when we're outside. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, and like she she barks, but it's more of a yip. Like a lot of this is based in truth. A lot yeah. of these lyrics are very much reveals. So um, I, I I'm wondering if you're going to continue in this direction, and what your next what your next uh, pet related song is going to be. That's such a great question. Oh man, 
I'll have to think about it. I definitely have a couple very, very humiliating songs I sing directly to Sky, but potentially after um, a glass of wine where it's just me and her and I sing to her songs about her. So those are some that might not make the album. Oh, give me, but... give me, give me a tiny taste of one. All right. So this song I sing to Sky all the time. I go, I used to be a wolf. But now I'm a baby, a beautiful baby dog. And I sing that all the time to her. <laughs> That's, I love it. I, you you got to do more. You Thank gotta you. Do Maybe more. I'll make a whole Pet Sounds album, but it'll be Pet yeah, Sounds. Pet Sounds. <laughs> yeah. I, and I also I neglected to mention my brother is an animal trainer. Um, oh. He worked for years with marine mammals, rehabilitated ones. Oh. And he, he inspired like a lot of my training journey. Where does he train now? Or what does he train? So he's raising his daughter now, and his partner still works with the uh, rehabilitated marine life. But he has a beautiful 13-year-old German shepherd, which is nearing the end of her days, who is immaculately trained and um inspired inspired me trying to get my uh my crap together with sky marine mammal training there is a place where you cannot use uh choke collars <laughs> no aversives with a dolphin no <laughs> no it's all just oh capture it capture it and they have these little whistles that are extremely high frequency yeah it's amazing stuff um although you know how they often they often uh, reward the male dolphins is with access to female dolphins, <laughs> which is not not a training technique we tend to use with the dogs. <laughs> no, I would say no. And the the dolphins are just reckless. It's like Berlin, you know. They're just <laughs> they they go ham every day. So um, have you have you gotten to swim with dolphins? I have had interactions with dolphins. I have not been in the water since I was very little with a dolphin. Um, I was swam in the Bahamas with wild and domesticated dolphins when I was little. Um, the do- the wild ones are super wow. fun when you're like snorkeling and they just come up to you and they're just like, "Sup? What's up?" Wow! Bro? Wow! Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had like those. Have you ever seen those little jets that you hold as you're snorkeling, so you can like go down close to the reef and then go back up? No, no. They're like these little propeller things that help you like keep it moving while you're snorkeling. And um, the dolphins, you could they were just like whirling around us. It's definitely a beautiful experience. Wow, you make Florida sound like a, an appealing place. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Besides the anti-vax and the anti-mask and the chaos <laughs> and the uh, con- the weapons everyone's carrying, besides all that, Florida's pretty great. <laughs> and the and the the dudes uh, with their dogs trying to make the dogs make them look tough. <laughs> yep, exactly. Except People for those guys, deep with their guard dogs. I don't want to call it any breeds um, specific. Yeah, but yeah, but the truth back. is, you don't have to go to Florida to find that. You can find that. Oh, it's down the. I mean, it's down the block for me. I see it all the time. And don't get me started on the people who don't think they need leashes in my neighborhood. It absolutely drives me up the wall. Yep, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm with you there. Um, yeah. Well, Doug, it has been so fun to talk to you. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you about was you had mentioned to me that you recently did some, uh, how should we put it, <laughs> dog volunteer tourism? So I went to Maui for six days alone. Uh, so it was like my own personal forgetting Sarah Marshall trip but without any Mila Kunis hotness or um, <laughs> any steamy eat, pray, love vibes. It was just me, uh, surfing lessons and a helicopter tour. And, uh, but I decided, I was like, I'm, I miss Sky. I'm going to go find um, a way to see a dog or two while I'm here. And so the Maui Humane Society, woo woo, um, they have this thing called Beach Buddies where you can day foster from 11 to 4 um, a dog and take it to the beach Aww. in Richmond. So I spent the day with Gus and Gus was a gorgeous herding dog mix. And um, it was a magical dog experience, but all the way far off in a tropical paradise. Aww. And you, yeah. you weren't compelled to bring Gus home? I was, but the logistics scared me of flying that far 
it yeah. does. I really was. I actually have checked in twice, and they're just so busy there. They haven't gotten back to me. That's such a neat thing that they do. It's super neat. How big was Gus? Gus was like uh, like 40 pounds or 50 pounds. Like definitely mostly Border Collie. Wicked smart. Had already been trained by somebody. I think the owner got sick. Uh, the, the parent or the owner got sick. And so Gus was six years old. Super, super well behaved. What, what's the wisest thing your brother has told you about animal training? Oh my gosh, you're going to love this, hopefully. Um, you need to set your dog up for success. Like it all comes back to that. Uh, he was like, if you set them up for success, then like you're doing way more than so many other pet guardians. Yeah. Well, I think that's what I generally call like management, like creating, creating the situation where you're going to get what you want. Yeah. Um, because you, yeah. Can, you control like the outlines of the, your dog's life by and large. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's beautiful. And like one of my big revelations lately has been like finding ways to use things that aren't just treats as rewards, like the walk itself, like sniffs, like, hey, go take a sniff of that thing. But instead, I'll be like, make sure she checks in with me, then click and then you get to go sniff that so that it's maintaining the connection with her on the walk. Things like that have been big breakthroughs for me lately. You can learn more about Douglas and his group North Coast and his production company, Sweet Tea Studios, that created our new best pets ever jingle at douglaswydick.com. Visit us on Instagram to see Big Man Tiny Dog. I'm also linking to it in the show notes. Lastly, a reminder that for podcast listeners, we have a special we're running right now where you can get a 90-minute private virtual session with a School for the Dogs trainer for free when you purchase our Good Dog Training and our Dog Training in 21 Days on-demand courses. Get it through the end of this month at schoolforthedogs.com slash virtual bundle.